that every time we talk about activity of those people, there will be always, yes, it is freedom of speech, but. And the turning point is but. Why do we still say but when we... <coughs> Once again, the uh, sh a shooting in uh, once again the shooting in Copenhagen. Jonathan uh, T. Gilliam, former Navy SEAL and FBI agent, and president of United States Continued Service, joins us. Good to see you. Um, here we have uh, an event talking about uh, freedom of speech when it comes to radical Islam mm -hmm. in uh, in Denmark, and uh, you heard the results. And her words were, "Why say but?" Yeah. And then pow pow yeah, pow. pow pow pow. You know that that there's a couple things about that particular thing. You know that that shooting was not random and it was very specific. I'm surprised more people weren't killed. Yeah, with all those the gunshots. Yeah, uh, obviously the guy was panicked himself when he was shooting. Otherwise, with having that much time to hit targets. Um, but the other thing about this whole group is the American people need to start. The whole world needs to start looking at this. You know, freedom of speech. I say this over and over again. It's not free. You have to fight for it and fight to defend it. But if you're going to go out, it's the same thing that happened in Paris. If you're going to go out and say whatever you want, you better be ready to back that up with security. But interestingly enough, the only people who don't have to really worry about that is ISIS. They can say whatever they want. They don't suffer any consequences yeah. by saying whatever uh, they want. Apparently not. Uh, that was horrific, the attack on the synagogue mm -hmm. uh, afterward. What one person dead there by the same man, apparently, mm -hmm. and two others were subsequently arrested for uh, harboring him. Uh, but what happened with the ISIS video, um, to 21 Coptic Christians uh, beheaded, marched one at a time, each had their own executioner by the sea in Libya, and the, then you see the, the blood in the water, the red blood. Right. Uh, the symbolism, the actual feet, or whatever you want to call it, the act of horror, terror, uh, combined with their message where they talk again, they threaten crusaders. Right which is Christians. Thank you, President Obama. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's, it just is unending. There's no, there, there's no fight. We have no fight in the game. And look, this happened in Egypt, right? So Egypt's now going to do what Jordan did. They're going to go out and bomb. And, and they did and a bomb, couple of right. sort, to, sorties, yeah. It, it's too little too late. I mean, I, I'm going to stop sugarcoating stuff. I've been, I've been trying to be, I'm not a politically correct guy, but I've been trying to be, you know, throttle back a little bit. But it's time to throttle forward now. You know, people need to start insisting that we get in the fight because the fight is going to come here. It's now starting to spread. They're now threatening Rome. Rome. They're threatening, you know, they're talking about, you know, specifically about Christians. Specifically, and this country, the majority religion in this country is Christian. So Christians need to start taking, you know, recognition of this because if it comes here and they need it, it's going to be bad. They need to think about this. They're so worried, and we rightfully so, about the immigration policies. But it only takes one really good instructor to come over here and re recruit a few, you know, ten people, train them very well, and then, and which could be done much easier than bringing, you know, a, ten people covertly in. Then you have 10 people that are trained here, and they can just lay waste. They could do 100 of those attacks. Oh, my attacks. God. I, I mean, churches, synagogues, schools, shopping malls, you name it. Tall buildings, stadiums. How many people have gone to Yankee Stadium? At the end of Yankee Stadium, there's literally 20,000 people exiting sure. in one area. Yeah. There's 70,000 people yeah. in that stadium. Yeah, they check you area. when you go in. But who's to say people can't be pull up in a car afterwards? And and the city officials, this is across the board, almost every city you go to, they don't shut roads down. I mean, there's vulnerabilities that are so big, Times Square every single right. and, day. And, and once and once it and it is going to get here if it's not stopped. So I said earlier in my in my monologue, how about a million man army uh, mm -hmm. composed of every the most powerful nations in the world? I mean, sign on if you don't, then you're 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 not signed on at your own peril. And we just do it. So we have the best military minds in this country or combined with others. Draw up a plan, six months, they're done. The problem, that's an absolute uh, excellent plan. The problem is the military minds that are at the top, um, they baffle me. You're in the DOD for 30 years. You've been in the news industry for a while. I was in military and law enforcement. I'm an expert. You're an expert in your field. What's up with the DOD executives? Why aren't they saying this has to be done? Like the, the uh, press secretary for the Department of Defense, I've never seen a guy less qualified to be an admiral in my life. You know, it, he has, he's an attorney. Yeah. So w w where is the, you just did that in two seconds, came up with that plan. W where's the DOD? 
What is the, well, unfortunately, the DOD can't do anything without the president, and They're they gonna, know the president would not do any such thing. Well, somebody's going to have to do something eventually, otherwise it's going to come here, and then well, what? It's going to have to be, it's going to have to be the next president. That's how it's going to have to be, and that's going to have to be a, the key point in running uh, for that election, and it's got to be against Hillary, who screwed this all up and contributed to this, and she's got to be held accountable for that. Can you imagine? I, I might run. Yeah, listen, I'll, I'll be your running mate. <laughs> Malsberg and Gilliam, That's ladies right. and gentlemen. And if we lose, we'll start a law firm. <laughs> uh, anyway, thank you very much. Always good you to see it. you. When we come back, Dr. Ben Carson will be here to weigh in on this and so much more. Don't go away.